Merci. Hello, today I would like to show you how to install um, RSB series on Audi A3. So this is 2016 Audi A3 and this is our um, main device brain box. So as you can see this is the original screen connector, GPS connector, 4G modem connector, display connector as well as main power connector. At the same time if you see here uh, the the upper one is the SIM card connector and the the lower one is the SD card connector. So this is the brain box and we provide a high resolution 7 inch screen that works with the factory main mechanism. Also on the contents you have a mic over here. Uh, this one is for the Bluetooth phone call and um, voice recognition. So usually people place the mic here and then route it down there to the RS now brain box. And the other thing is this is 4G antenna. You can place it here and route it down there. And another important antenna is uh, GPS antenna. It looks like this and usually people place it over here and then route down there. And finally uh, we have the main cable. Um, this is our uh, fuse box and for newer one we are providing new USB filter. Apparently this is not the uh, latest cable but um, on the newer one there is another box like this that this big USB cable is passing. It's for um, mo to have more stability in CarPlay connection. So we'll show uh, about it later. So today Mr. Lee will be showing us how to um, do the installation. So you begin from the removing uh, air band which is easily removable with the trim removable wedges so this is how you remove these air bands and once you remove the air band you you are going to need a screwdriver and for that i believe it's eight millimeter hex Actually, it's uh, the torque screw, so you place the screwdriver and you will remove the one screw. And then the screw looks like this. So this is torque type screw and you remove two. Once you are done with the um, removing the screws, you will open up the passenger side fuse panel that you are going to remove. And then... Hold up. That's 10 millimeter hex socket. You remove one there. And then there's a 
another one so it's second also underneath of the glove compartment there are a few So we have removed two so far and the third one is coming. Probably you will find that some of the screws are pretty um, hard to remove as they may be uh, already uh, stuck in there for a long time but if you uh, do it patiently you'll be able to remove most of them so these are 10 millimeter um, I think it's axnut type um, screws so we already have removed three and I believe there are three more well, slightly more than that was the fourth one and fifth Basically, removing the glove compartment is pretty much the same for the almost all Audis. So we have removed almost, I believe, seven screws. And once we confirm we have removed all the screws, we will bring the glove compartment down to have some working space. So um, for this vehicle, the, uh, the MMI device is located inside the glove compartment. So Mr. Lee just removed the 
MMI device and then he's looking for one hidden screw behind the MMI device it's again 10 millimeter X nut So that makes eight, I believe. And using three removal wedges, we are removing the glove compartment. There goes the ninth. So once everything is removed, the glove compartment should come out fairly easily without too much force and then now we are removing the the big connector which is called quad rock and now we are seeing cabling so we disconnected the quad lock and then we are just removing tangle wires carefully so now Mr. Lee is uh, preparing our own harness we are passing our bypass quad lock so our male receptacle is going into the female receptacle of the car and then our male receptacle is going to the MIB main unit and there is a latching mechanism so you need to operate the lever to get to the connector inserted properly so the bypass cable is insta installed That's our female bypass. And now we are removing the screen compartment with the trim removal wedges. So, using the wedges, you pry it carefully and they will start to pop up whenever you are uh, working on the car's interior don't rush there's they are supposed to be come out i mean everything is supposed to be removable so carefully inspect how the retching mechanisms are engaged yeah, like this it has to be fairly easy and nice so then we disconnect the connectors 
one is power and the other one with lounge for fin is the LVDS cable so I see Mr. Lee just swing with the power connector and now he is carefully removing the wire harness lock and he's removing the upper trim So the upper trim cover is, has been removed. LVDS video cable has been removed. And the motor mechanism um, power connectors. Often people uh, forget about the, actually that's screen power and the canvas and the one that Mr. Lee removed earlier was the motor mechanism connector. So there are three connectors and we are no longer going to use the connector for the power but we are still going to use the connector for the LBDS and the motor mechanism control. So whenever you forgot uh, either of them uh, you would have no uh, original Audi screen where the mechanism is not working. So, um, Mr. Lee is removing the wire harness, and some of them are zip tied. So, as you can see, the screen position is being closed. So, in this original, original, original. in this stage, we cannot. Uh, remove the screen completely so what Mr. Lee is going to do is he is going to supply 12 volt voltage here and move the screen a bit and then so that we can remove the screen so that's 12 volt momentarily we'll power it up and it's a scene if he has enough space to remove the screw, there's a screw screw inside. So, so yeah, there's a screw, and now we are able to remove it. So we remove the power. If you want to avoid this procedure, what you can do is if you have vacuum go to uh, the infotainment system module and move the screen onto diagnostics position so 
if you put the screen onto diagnostic position, the screen will move like that. But we are just here to show you. You can do it. You can do this way as well. So we are removing screws. There are four screws that is holding the screen in place and we carefully remove the screen. So we have removed the original screen and then we place our new screen in the same way that it has been installed.사람들이 해체하는 걸 보면은 주로 펼 줄도 아니까는 두 번째로 필요는 아니야. 그래서 so we assemble back using the factory screws and it will be working like charm like the original screw. So we replaced the screen with our new one and we transfer rubber stoppers. So we place the rubber stopper again. Now we will insert the wire harness. So you put your both hands to both poles and take out the necessary wires and then we connect the main connector but before we do it we insert our own display cable through the hole and then we bring it out to the right under corner so carefully the harness went in and then we place the screen as they are So whenever we are doing it, we need to route the cable as it was before like the factory. So you are going to need a new zip tie to route the wire properly. Okay. You got your shirt on, Alia. Okay.
actually do it. So what is important to you is make sure that the wire does not go uh, further uh, left side, otherwise it will interfere with the mechanism. And then also it's important to route wire as it was like the factory one. routing wire for the screen is complete and now we are connecting back the motor mechanism connector Connecting the cables, opening, and then GPS antenna. And then we are plugging the mic. Connecting 4G antenna and then now uh, he's looking for the original LCD connector and we plug it like that as you can see we are no longer using that 18 power supply and okay, as you can see it's powered up and then it rides like automatic automatically like a charm 
then we carefully insert the screen back to its on position So the screen goes back like this and then let's test it. So as you can see the RPM is working and the MMI controller is working. So um Gio, just can you sit up. So uh, this is basically how you install the device and then everything else you put everything back to the uh, where it was. There, were, there has been two screws over there and then we place this box over here which uh, there's a uh, lot of space. Okay, and then for the GPS and uh, antennas uh, you will, if you see here there's an airbag mark plastic and this is removable with the, um, the prior and then there is a screw and then I know behind this one there's an airbag but don't worry too much about it because the crush sensor is on the door so even if uh, you uh, pull that trim outward if the airplane the airbag won't blow up but for the safety precaution, it's rec always recommended to disconnect your battery whenever you are working on the airbag area. So as I said, if you um, remove this plastic piece, this plastic piece is not completely removable. You just pry it and then pull it out and then there is a screw and then remove the screw and carefully pull and then that trim will be removable. Then you route the tape cables like this so there's two antenna like GPS and the 4G and for the mic uh, it would be better if you can get it to here in the same way if not you can place it here or there wherever you want so the RS nav device has been installed and let's see so FMCD the factory function is being displayed beautifully so whenever you want to go back to Android system you touch the screen and it will give you the Android and then uh, as I uploaded in my video uh, right now the system is not connected to the internet so you may want to con connect it to internet I'm going to use my own hotspot Once internet is run, what you must do is go to the Play Store or you can use the scroll and sign in and update all your Google apps to the latest. That's first more important thing and then in order to get the sound you go to the original screen and then push the media button and you place it in the aux. So this is how you get the sound from Android. So let's test some. So there is a ultimate setup guide for RS knobs and 
that covers most of the post installation um, setting up so let me just test the Bluetooth here Bluetooth is on the rear sun setting just make sure the Bluetooth is start from the clean and then I will connect my phone to the device so let's search for the available device and my cell phone is has appeared there so I always ask connection from the Arsnav device to my cell phone and it's being connected like we sun bd this is our own bluetooth app and now it says it's connected for phone call as well as in the audio and then everything has been connected and let's test the bluetooth music welcome to future life so this way um, I think we pretty much covered how to install the RS number system and I would say it's fairly easy but if you are not compar uh, comparable just ask help from the local uh, professional and RS knob will be always supporting uh, its own customer so once you're done this one uh, just to show th this one is as far as I know this one is equipped with the factory reverse camera so when you put the factory reverse camera you may get this kind of blue screen but this is because you are getting blue screen because you didn't set it up for the camera type so you go to the rear camera setup and then you choose OEM and then it's perfectly showing the OEM screen oh these overlays you can also uh, set those here like uh, dynamic parking parking sensor display hide because this one is the factory one and so dynamic parking guideline should be disabled too as well and then if we go to the parking uh, no, I mean reverse the original screen and with original dynamic parking guideline. Also, one tip: this is a uh, touch enable the brightness control, so you can sweep up, brightness will go off, sweep down. The bright brightness will be going down. Also, whenever uh, the headlight comes on, the screen will be dimmer. Whenever the headlight go, comes goes off, it will be automatically uh, adjusted. And you can change the value here. Make sure always this one is checked so that you can uh, adjust these values. If you don't uh, check it, you cannot adjust the value. So this is how you use it. And for more details, check out my Ultimate RS Nav Guide setup video. So in order to wrap up, you just assemble back everything as they were. Well, I guess that's pretty much everything. Oh, before I let you go, uh, I would like to show you the new cable. So um, this one is really um, power filter with a fuse. So as you can see, there's a fuse. So whenever the RS knob screen is not coming on but your radio is working, you want to check this fuse. And for latest RS knob devices, all they have this kind of another small box. And this one has the USB filter. So everything is glued down uh, and it's very stable. So whenever you are using it normally for CarPlay, like uh, for the CarPlay dongle, you connect to the USB port in this harness 
right over here but there's a small button when do you use this small button you use you press this small button whenever you uh, need to update the firmware using a laptop so let's say your RF knob is somehow got bricked and you need to recover it then you release the button and then connect the USB and connect uh, the USB cable to your laptop and then you can um, flash the firmware otherwise you just leave it press for more stable USB operation so I guess I covered pretty much everything thank you for watching